In this demonstration, we're going to look at a new vSphere with Tanzu feature, which is VM service. And this allows a developer to create a virtual machine on vSphere infrastructure using a simple YAML, or yet another markup language, manifest files, just as they would any other Kubernetes object. I've already enabled vSphere with Tanzu. You can see it here in the workload management section. A cluster has been set up with vSphere with Tanzu. And I have already created a namespace. I've called that a Cormac new namespace. And if you're familiar with vSphere with Tanzu, you might notice a new section now called services. And this is where you can go and configure the new VM service that I'm about to demonstrate. So you can see you can manage it from here, but you could also manage it from directly within the namespace. So I, if I click on this namespace, and you'll see now that there's one new uh, window called the VM service window. Uh, so I already have a TKG cluster created. You can see that here, it's got a three control plane nodes, uh, but not really too interested in looking at this. We're more interested in looking at the VM service. And what you'll notice here is that there's a number of VM classes that are already associated with this namespace. And this simply defines the resource consumption of the class of virtual machine that you choose to deploy. So we'll see that later when we go and build the manifests in the command line. Uh, one thing to notice is that there are two different types of classes. There are the best effort classes, and I have two selected here, medium and small. And you can see that there's no reservations associated with those. So that just means that if there is a, if there is a lack of resources available on the system, then it might be that we cannot meet the resources uh, required for these virtual machines. There is another type of class. These are the guaranteed classes. Once again, I have two of those selected, large and medium. And you can see here that these are 100% uh, reservation on both CPU and memory. So that just means that you are guaranteed that these uh, virtual machines or virtual machines that are built with these classes uh, will have the resources available at all times. Okay, the one other thing to show you then is the content libraries associated with the virtual machine. Um, so you can see here that there's two different types that I've associated here. Um, one of them, the VM service image. Let's take a look at that. Uh, we can just simply look at the content libraries like so. And in this VM service image content library, which I've associated with my VM service, I have a CentOS 8 image. And that is the image that I'm going to use to build my virtual machine through the VM service. So with that, let's uh, pop on to the command line and let's have a look at how to create this virtual machine. Okay, so now we're in the CLI and this is how we're going to interact with my vSphere with Tanzu. And this is how we're going to build a virtual machine uh, using the new VM service. So the first thing to do is just check uh, what context I'm in. And I can just uh, use the following command. And at the moment I am in, I'm in the correct context, which is the namespace Cormac new namespace in my vSphere with Tanzu environment. So there's a few things we talked about. One of these was the um, virtual machine classes. Now I can do a shorthand VM class to display the VM classes that are currently available. Now there's a, a subtle change in behavior to previous versions of vSphere with Tanzu where all of the VM classes would have been displayed previously. Now it's only when a VM class has been associated with a namespace that you can actually see it listed here. And so the, the probably the confusing thing is that these VM classes may not be accessible um, to the namespace I'm currently in, the Cormac new NS. Um, for example, there may be another namespace that has been created and these VM classes have been associated with that namespace, but I would still get visibility into them uh, from my namespace. The thing that tells us whether a VM class has been bound to a namespace is uh, the, the command uh, virtual machine class binding. So if we get a virtual machine class binding, this will tell us whether a virtual machine class has been associated with this namespace. And so it has indeed. I mean, there is only one namespace here, but it's only the fact that we have bound these classes to this namespace that they show up in the previous output, the kubectl get vm class. 
So again, it can be a little bit confusing if there's multiple namespaces and you see some of these classes, but they haven't been bound to your particular namespace. But in this case, we're good to go. We have a number of different class um, classes bound as we saw in the UI as well. So the other thing to check now is just to check the uh, virtual machine images. And again, I have a shorthand for that, which is the VM images, if I spelled it properly. And the image that we're actually interested in is actually the CentOS image. And I cannot use that. Is it the VM image? Oops. Done image, good. VM image, or do I have to spell the whole thing? Ah, VM image, there we go. So shorthand is actually VM image, not images. And the image that I'm interested in is this one here, the CentOS Stream 8. VM service. So great. So how do we do this? There's a couple of steps involved. Um, the first thing, if I show you in this directory here, actually let's just do it clear. Yes. The first thing I'll need to do is set up some user data. So we do a cloud init and cloud init will take this user data that we created to customize the virtual machine that we're about to create. So let's have a look inside of this and you can see that there's some basic things in here. This is just basically to give me SSH authority, some sudo information, and then networking configuration. So in this case, it's DHCP true. And then I'm going to run a command. Um, so that when we log in, we get the message of the day displayed. Um, now, in order to use this, I've got to convert it into, um, or I've got to encrypt it, is probably a better description, into a format that can be read um, when I do my cloud init. And to do that, I would do a base64 command and I would take the input from this uh, cloud, oops, this CentOS user data. So there we go, now it is in a format that we can put into our virtual machine manifest file. And this will be then passed off to the cloud init process uh, running inside of the virtual machine that we create, and we'll customize the operating system, which in this case will be CentOS. So let's have a look at that manifest file next, now that we have the, the data set up. And so if we look at manifest, that's called CentOS OS Dayama. So again, uh, a few things here, the kind is virtual machine, uh, we're going to call it CentOS VM. It's going to be placed in that namespace. Uh, which network we're going to put it on? And we can query. We can actually query the networks using another kubectl command. And there we go. We have one uh, virtual machine network that's available for the VM service. And that's the one I've used here. And it's actually using vSphere uh, distributed switches or vSphere networking as opposed to NSXT networking. The class name, the best effort small. So we listed the classes and we know that that one is bound. And that's the image. We got that image name from the VM image output. We want it to power on. Uh, storage class, we just need to check whether that storage class has been associated with our namespace. And it should be. Yes, the R5, short for RAID 5. It's actually a v vSAN policy. And we're all good. And it says it's going to use this config map and the config map is what we build now. And we give it a name again, it's in the same namespace. And here's the user data that is base64 encrypted um, that we just saw in the previous output. And again, the yeah, host name, yeah, that all matches up. So we have created our user data. We have encrypted the user data. We have built the virtual machine manifest file along with the config map for the user data. Now we can go ahead and we can apply that. So we just do a kubectl apply minus f and we point it to manifests and the CentOS manifest that we just saw previously. And everything going well. We see the config map and the virtual machine created. So now what we can do is we can pop back onto the UI and we can see that being created. And if we go back to the vSphere UI, let's go and have a closer look at our namespace. And within 
the Cormac new namespace. We still have our uh, TKG cluster as there previously, but now we have a new VM or CentOS VM. And you can see various information about that. It's got an IP address from DHCP and we should be able to see, uh, it tells us the namespace and the data store, the vSAN data store, and all of that good stuff. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how we can now use uh, simple YAML manifest files to create not just TKG clusters or pod VMs, but also virtual machines through the VM service on vSphere with Tanzu. And that completes the demonstration.